Army Combat Fitness Test. Three repetition, maximum deadlift. Deadlift the maximum weight possible three times. Bend at the knees and hips. Reach down and grasp the bar. Arms should be fully extended, back flat, head in line with the spinal column or slightly extended, and heels in contact with the ground. Stand up and lift the bar by extending the hips and knees until reaching an upright stance. The back should remain straight, not flexed or extended. Lower the bar to the ground under control while maintaining a flat back position. Do not drop or let go of the bar. The gluteus maximus extends the hip joint. The quadriceps femoris extends the knee joint. The erector spinae stabilize the spine, static contraction. The brown muscles stabilize the additional joints. The deadlift can be divided into two stages. The first stage, lifting the bar to knee level. This is done mainly through knee extension. The trunk remains in a forward-leaning position. The second stage, full extension of the hip and the knee until the body is fully straightened. The rod placed on the back illustrates the importance of maintaining a straight back. Throughout the exercise, keep the back in a neutral position. In this position, the core muscles work together with the greatest efficacy and protect the spine. Army Combat Fitness Test Army Combat Fitness Test Standing Power Throw Throw a 10-pound medicine ball backward and overhead for distance. Hold the medicine ball. Stand behind the line facing away from the starting line. Lower the ball to between the legs. Lift it up fast and throw it backward as far as you can. You can perform several preparatory movements before the throw. The quadriceps muscle extends the knees. The gluteus maximus extends the hip joint. The anterior deltoid flexes the shoulder joint, lifting the arms upward. The gastrocnemius flexes the ankle in plantar flexion. The erector spinae, together with the abdominal muscles and other core muscles, stabilize the spine. The thoracic erector spinae can also assist the other active muscles by extending the spine. The other muscles in pink assist the movement in the other joints. Army Combat Fitness Test Hand Release Push-Up Complete as many hand release push-ups as possible in two minutes. Enter a prone position. Hands placed on the floor near the shoulders, with the index fingers inside the outer edges of the shoulders. The chest and front of the hips and thighs are on the ground. Push the entire body as a single unit to full elbow extension and keep the body straight. After the elbows are fully extended, bend the elbows to lower the body back to the ground. Once your body touches the ground, immediately move both arms out to the side, straightening the elbows into a T position. After reaching this position, the elbows bend to move the hands back under the shoulder. From this starting position, perform an additional repetition. The pectoralis major flexes and horizontally adducts the arm. The anterior deltoid assists. The triceps extends the elbow. The core muscles together with the hip flexors, in brown, are active statically and prevent the body from collapsing. Sprint Drag Carry Conduct 5 times 50 meters shuttle for time. Sprint, Drag, Lateral, Carry and Sprint The Sprint Drag Carry is a measure of muscular strength and anaerobic capacity, abilities needed to exert effort at high intensity levels for relatively brief periods of time, from a few seconds to one minute. Sprint Sprint 25 meters Touch the 25 meter line with foot and hand Turn and sprint back to the start line. Backward sled drag. The main muscle pushing the body backward is the quadriceps. In addition, the entire posterior chain of muscles, in purple, is active statically to stabilize the body throughout the exercise. Lateral shuffle. This exercise develops the ability to move laterally in preparation for more vigorous training and combat activities. Loaded carry. The farmer's walk engages all the muscle groups in one movement. 
The core muscles, the leg muscles, and the shoulder stabilizers are heavily targeted, particularly the upper trapezius. Sprint. Sprint 25 meters. Touch the 25 meter line with foot and hand, turn and sprint back to the start line. Army Combat Fitness Test. Leg Tuck. Complete as many leg tucks as possible. Maintain a relative vertical posture while moving the hips and knees up and down without excessive swinging. Hold the bar with an alternating grip, legs off the floor. From a straight arm position, pull the body up until the knees touch the elbows. Return to the starting straight arm position. The latissimus dorsi extends the arm. The abdominal muscles stabilize the pelvis and flex the spine. The hip flexors pull the legs. The biceps brachii, brachialis, and brachioradialis flex the elbow. This exercise is considered difficult for several reasons. The first reason is that the movement involves many joints and muscles. The second reason for the difficulty in performing the exercise is the heavy load on the abdominal muscles. On the one hand, the abdominal muscles flex the spine and they also stabilize the pelvis. Raising the knees activates the hip flexors, which pull the pelvis and tilt it anteriorly. In addition, pulling the body up activates the latissimus dorsi, which also pulls the pelvis and creates anterior pelvic tilt. In other words, the abdominal muscles must be strong in order to stabilize the pelvis and also flex the spine. Note that this exercise requires normative spinal flexion ability. Normative means uniform, integrative, flexion of the vertebrae and creation of a sequential arch. In this test of seated flexion, we see a deficient sequential arch in the lumbar vertebrae, which is usually caused by structural rigidity or shortened muscles, such as in the quadratus lumborum. This deficiency does not allow exercisers to flex the spine and bring the knees to reach the elbows even if the muscles are very strong.